Now, you've probably heard that FM is impossible and nobody understands how to do it. But here's the truth. The core concept of FM is actually pretty simple. And you, yes you, can understand it. And I can prove it. I'll explain the core concept of FM right now, in under a minute, and if you're feeling brave, we can move on to the details. When you're first learning traditional subtractive synthesis, you're introduced to the base waveforms. The sine wave contains just your fundamental frequency. The square wave contains every odd harmonic. The sawtooth contains every odd and even harmonic. These are differences in kind. The actual set of overtones or harmonics are different between the waves. If you can tell the difference between a square and a saw, you can recognize differences in kind. The square and the triangle have the same harmonics but in different amounts. This is a difference in quantity. If you can tell the difference between a triangle and a square, or between an unfiltered and a filtered wave, you can distinguish between differences in quantity. In FM we have two main parameters, our ratios and our modulation amounts. Our ratios control the kinds of overtones we'll hear. Our modulation amounts control the quantities of those overtones. So if you can tell the difference between this sound and this sound, or this sound and this sound, you can understand FM. So are you feeling bold? If so, let's jump right into it. In subtractive synthesis, we start with a harmonically complex wave and subtract overtones. In FM, we start with simple waves, usually sine waves, and add overtones through audio rate modulation. FM has its own techniques and terminology, so let's do some quick vocab, and then we can figure out how it actually works. In subtractive, our audio chain includes our oscillators, mixers, filters, and amplifiers. And then we have our controllers, LFOs, and envelopes that act on these modules. But since we don't hear them directly, it's easy to consider our controllers as external to our main audio chain. In FM, this isn't the case. Our controllers, or modulators, are essential to our final output. The basic building block of an FM patch is an operator. An operator contains a sine wave oscillator, an amplifier, and an amp envelope. We can send that operator directly to our output, and we'll hear a basic sine wave. But FM synths don't just have one operator, they usually have between 4 and 8. So let's get a little more complicated. We'll take four operators and set the tuning so that we're playing a major chord. Seems easy enough, right? Well, we immediately hit a roadblock. The tuning of an operator isn't based on semitones, it's based on ratios. An operator is tuned to a multiple of your master frequency. But okay, we can do this. We remember that our first five harmonics spell out a major triad. So let's do one, two, three, and five. Or we can get fancy and do some division. And then we'll have 1, 1.25, 1.5, and 2. Now we just send those operators to the output, maybe mess with the envelopes a little bit, and there it is, we're masters of FM. Well, not quite. While we've definitely become more comfortable with operators and ratios, we haven't done any actual FM. Our mistake was assuming that the output of an operator always goes into our audio chain but we can take the output of an operator and use it to modulate the frequency of another operator. Ah, I get it now. Operators, while internally identical, can perform different functions. A carrier is an operator whose output is sent into the audio chain. A modulator is an operator whose output is used to modulate the frequency of another operator. Putting four Legos in a line is a great way to make a fence, but a terrible way to make a tower. Likewise, using four carriers is a great way to make a stack of sine waves, but a terrible way to make a piano. The real power of FM is only apparent when you use a combination of carriers and modulators, so let's take a look at how they interact. Do you remember when I said that ratios determine our timbre? Well, here's how it works. In FM, your final output contains your carrier's frequency as well as a set of sidebands. These sidebands are found at your carrier frequency, plus and minus every integer multiple of your modulator frequency. This makes a lot more sense in practice, so let's use an example. If a carrier at 100 Hz is modulated by a wave at 300 Hz, our final output can have 100, 400, 700, 1000, and so on. And remember the minus. This means that we'll also have negative sidebands at 200, 500, 800, 1100, and so on. The negative sidebands have inverted phase, so if a frequency appears in the positive and negative sidebands, they'll partially cancel each other out. And just because these overtones can appear in our final output, it doesn't mean that they will. 
Depending on our modulation amount, some overtones will be weaker, some will be stronger, some will be inaudible. But this formula gives us a pool of harmonics that can appear in our output. I know this can seem overwhelming. Like, what happens if we change notes? Do we have to run these numbers all over again? Well, if you're dealing with hertz, you do. But remember, operators don't deal with hertz, they deal with ratios. So let's do the same example again, but with ratios. Our carrier is at 100, and our modulator is at 300. This is a 1 to 3 carrier modulator ratio. So our final output would contain 1, 4, 7, 10, and so on, and the negative sidebands at 2, 5, 8, 11, and so on. And when we change notes, these ratios stay exactly the same. This is really the core of FM. In subtractive, we have a few overtone structures to choose from, and we just modify the quantities. But in FM, we also have control over the kinds of overtones that we're hearing. To create a sawtooth type wave with every integer harmonic, use a 1 to 1 ratio. To create a square type with every odd harmonic, use a 1 to 2. But we don't have to stop there, so let's experiment. I used a random number generator to generate 5 numbers between 1 and 10. Here's what came out. Let's try to generate an output that has all of these overtones. You might notice that we have 3, 6, and 9. We can use a carrier modulator pair with a 3, 3 ratio to create those. Then we can use another pair with a 5, 5 ratio to create the 5 and 10. If we want to, we can move our carriers and achieve the same result. Our carrier at 3 can move to 6 or 9. Our carrier at 5 can move to 10 or 15. This would affect the distribution of overtones, but we would still have the same pool of overtones to draw from. It's also important to note that these ratios can be reduced. So a 3-3 is just a 1-1 one, one occurring at the third harmonic. A 10-5 is just a 2-1 occurring at the tenth. Let's say we want an output with the following harmonics. There are two ways we can do it. We can have a carrier at 1 and a modulator at 2, and a carrier at 3 with a modulator at 3. So that's four operators overall, two carriers and two modulators. But what if we only have three operators? Well, we can take a carrier at 3 and then use two separate modulators, one at 2 and one at 3. This would produce the same set of overtones with an entirely different arrangement of operators. In FM, the arrangement of carriers and modulators is known as an algorithm. Multiple carriers can share a modulator. This has the same effect as multiple carriers with identical modulators. Multiple modulators can also act on the same carrier. This has the same effect as multiple modulators with identical carriers. In some FM synths, a carrier can also modulate itself. This is called feedback and is pretty much identical to a one-to-one -one carrier modulator pair. To create more complex sounds, you can even stack modulators. With stacking, every harmonic present in the lower carrier modulator pair is treated as a carrier for the upper modulator. That sounds pretty intense, so let's do an example. In our bass pair, let's do a one to eight ratio. This gives us 1, 7, 9, 15, and 17. Now let's modulate the modulator with an operator tuned to the ninth harmonic. To find the resulting sound, we'll need to run the calculation for each harmonic present in our bass pair. And after all that, our final wave contains every integer harmonic from 1 to 20, except for 4, 5, 13, and 14. Algorithms and ratios determine which harmonics can appear in your final output but your modulation amount, or mod depth, determines the quantities. Generally speaking, greater modulation depth means increased brightness. This doesn't track perfectly across all overtones, so you won't necessarily see every harmonic increase in tandem, but the general effect will be a brightening. Since each operator has its own amp envelope, we can use a modulator's envelope to change the brightness over time. In situations with multiple modulators, you can even use this to crossfade between overtone structures. A popular FM trick is using a quick decaying modulator to create a complex attack transient. For additional complexity, this modulator can be a stack of modulators. For a more percussive effect, you can even use a modulator with a non-integer ratio. This creates overtones that don't line up with the harmonic series, so it won't have a clearly defined sense of pitch. With all this info, you're ready to go out and make your own sounds. But first, let's cover a few tricks that can add some extra life to your patches. Most FM synths will include an LFO for vibrato, but you can also use an operator. Set your operator to a low fixed frequency and modulate another operator. And there it is, envelope controlled vibrato. FM allows you to do traditional exponential detune, but with some interesting side effects. Let's use a basic one-to-one -one short stack. 
but detune the carrier a little bit so we have 1.02 to 1. By detuning the carrier, we create detuned pairs at each overtone. Now let's try inverting it so we have 1 to 1.02. Now we get the same detuned pairs, but because we're detuning our modulator, our tuning drifts in the upper harmonics. If we detune our carrier by a fixed frequency A, we'll get detuned pairs with a fixed frequency differential of 2A. If we invert this and detune our modulator by a fixed frequency, we see the same drift as before. To create vivid responsive sounds in FM, it's essential to use key tracking and velocity. These features allow you to vary the amplitude of your modulators in response to your playing. Great patches aren't just sounds, they're complete instruments. And instruments have responsiveness and internal variation. Maybe you want stronger enharmonic transients in response to harder velocity. Or maybe you want your fundamental to be weaker in the higher registers. FM gives you an incredible set of tools to create living, breathing instruments. The only limitations are your imagination and your patience. If you enjoyed this episode, support me on Patreon for weekly bonus episodes. This was kind of intense, so we'll be taking it easy this week and doing some relaxed FM pad design. As always, I'm That Beat, and this has been Synth Fundamentals. Thanks for watching.